in your word. As I hear this, I, I think about something that only God can do. Take my life, Lord. And as you take my life, take me out of it. Because, Lord, the only problem with my life is me. I'm in the way of what you need to do. I, I, can, I can tend to me, tend to me and not others, unless others do something for me in the name of me. But when I get out of the way, I can tend to others in the love of Christ. I can love others more than I love myself, only when I get out of the way. And the problem is I am in the valley of trouble because of the trouble that I've created for me. I'm in the valley of trouble because of the trouble that I created for me and I don't want to see the trouble that I created for me because in that valley, that's where I hide me. So take me out of the way, Lord, where I can, I can be like the, like the man of God said today. And show appreciation for such a great ministry as the Spirit of Jesus. Amen. Amen. In and out of jail, in and out of prison. Amen. Prison three times, he told us. But he said, I came to the Spirit of Jesus six years ago. And have not been, not even back to jail since I've been here. You better look for the work of God. Not in your life, but in others. And when you can appreciate the work of God in others' life, then you'll know he's working in your yeah. life. We thank you for all things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We thank God this morning for a word that is coming unto us. Pastor, I need you to get the mic because our, our scripture reading is coming from the book of Joshua. The book of Joshua. Um, I need you to get a mic. Um, and, 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 and the scripture reading is verses 16 through 17. I was going to explain what took place before this, but you've got to understand what takes place in the book of the book of Joshua. Um, in the book, what takes place in the book of Joshua, verses 16 through 17, is takes place because of what God has set in place. God has set in place for for the people of the people of His chosen people to overcome what they could not overcome without Him. We talked about overcoming last week, am I right? Amen. And what we learned, was that, was that Monday night, the overcome? Or was that Sunday? Was it Monday? Monday? Monday was overcome. And we, we realized in order to overcome, we must come over to God 100%. That was somebody. I'm not, I have not overcome what, I, 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 what I'm trying to overcome because I won't come over to God 100%. So in order to overcome, I must be willing to come over. Amen? Amen. So when I hear this, that was a sermon, a sermon Monday night. When I hear this, this takes me into what am I trying to overcome? I'm trying to come, overcome the, the valley in which I have created. And we call it the valley of trouble. Hello, somebody. And I want you to understand that in the, in, in, in the book of Joshua, I was going to read, I need you to understand the setting. The setting of this is they have just conquered, they have just conquered um, 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 walking around in that city. What that city where we walked around 21, seven times a day? Jericho. We just, we just conquered Jericho. But there are some things other than what was in the Mosaic law that was required. Even then. There was something beyond the law that had to be done. Even we knew the curses that came from the law. We knew that that all, all you all your old Old Testament, all your Old Testament followers. I I, I know I know y'all love the Old Testament, but but I'm sorry, I can't live there. I can't even live in the new. I can't even live with Jesus no more because I finally met God. But those of who are, who of you are still in the Old Testament, you better get to the new because you'll never get to God except going to the new. You'll never get to Jesus except going through the through. You'll never get to the old. To God except going to the new and you'll never get to God except going through Jesus. The Bible says no one can get to the Father except through the Son. So now I need to learn how to appreciate the Son through the Old Testament. I need to learn the Son through the New Testament. And then I need to meet the Son and follow the Son outside of the Old and the New. Y'all want to hear the Word of God today. And then, and then only then I can I meet God through Walking with the Son and becoming what the Son says I must become. All of us say we're Christian, but how many of us are Christ-like? My God. We'll claim that name Christian, but, but, but in order to be 
a Christian for real, for real, I got to be Christ-like. In other words, what he's saying, Bishop, uh, uh, in order to be a Robinson, uh, you got to you got to be walking in the bloodline of the Robinson. Hello, somebody. But in order to be a Christian, you got to be walking in the bloodline of Christ. Amen. And there must be an indication that that I am walking in the in the, I'm sorry, not the bloodline, but the spirit line of Christ. There must be an indication that I am walking in the spirit line of Christ by the by the way that I live. Hello, somebody. I live beyond what I can do for myself. And, and, and when I when I live beyond what I can do for myself, I know there's nothing I'm not capable of doing for somebody else because I know what I have done for myself, it was out of me. Amen. I hope I hope I said that slow enough. First lady says, sometimes you be talking so fast, I bet you can't say it no more. And I tell you, you're absolutely right, because I talk so fast, because I intend not to say it anymore. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But I need to set the stage. They, we've, just, we've just come out of Jericho. We, we've, just, we've just obeyed God with some nonsense of walking around the city seven times a day for seven days. And, and then on the seventh day, we shouted, and all of a sudden, the walls fell. And I, they won the battle so easy, because the people that were inside the walls say, we know we did because of what we just saw. We know we can't conquer them because of what we just saw. We know that God is with the Spirit of Jesus because of what's going on over there. And God said, now I need you, Bishop, today, as of today, no longer to try and recruit nobody. He said, you've been getting in my way of filling up the church. Don't, don't longer worry about who's coming to church. You just preach the word and I will do the rest. Hello, somebody. All right? So in other words, now I need you to, I just set the stage, we are in, we're in, we, we just overcome Jericho, I'm going to let uh, Pastor read us from 1 through 15, and then we'll get into our sermon. Come on, Pastor. 7, 1 through 15. Praise the Lord. New Living Translation. But Israel violated the instructions about the things set apart for the Lord. A man named Achan had stolen some of these dedicated things. So the Lord was very angry with the Israelites. Achan was the son of Carmi, a descendant of Zimri, son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah. Joshua sent some of his men from Jericho to spy out the town of Ai, east of Bethel, near beth Amen. When they returned, they told Joshua, there's no need for all of us to go up there. It won't take more than two or three thousand men to attack I, since there are so few of them. Don't make all of our people struggle to go up there. Pastor, stop right there, Pastor. What defeats us is our, is our convenience. What defeats us is if we want to be comfortable. So here they were. They had won battle after battle, sending everybody into battle that God said needed to go into battle. But this time, they, they said, ain't no sense in put sending everybody. We'll let some people remain in their comfort state, and we'll just send 3,000. And because they didn't do what God wanted them to do, 36 lost their life. You got to understand when God was when they were conquering the land, the land there was no lives lost that belonged to God. Y'all 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 never saw that part of the sermon, of the journey. So but when we when we are concerned about being comfortable, we're costing our family. Because what we're supposed to learn in the place of discomfort, we don't learn. And when we don't learn, we can't give our family the nourishment that we need to give them. Hello, somebody, read. So approximately 3,000 warriors went, were sent. But they were soundly defeated. Oh my God, because we did not send everybody because we were worried about doing it our way. We had a plan beyond the plan of God. God said, send all the warriors. They were so they thought they were so such a mighty warrior. They could defeat 12,000 people in which in which in which this particular um, land had. He, they thought they could defeat 12,000 people with 3,000. That's how mighty they thought they were. They were mighty because they stayed in the plan of God, which is the will of God. Come on. The men of Ai chased the Israelites from the town gate as far as the quarries, and they killed about 36 who were retreating down the slope. Running and dying. That's what y'all do. We running and we die. All because we will not fall into the commandments of God. And all we got to do from keep keep from dying or going to hell is to love everybody, love everybody, love everybody, and there's no proving that I love anybody that loves me back. 
If you only love people that are loving you back, you die. Because you're running. Hello, somebody. Amen. From the ones that you should be teaching. Praise the Lord. Read, Pastor. The Israelites were paralyzed with fear at this turn of events. Now, all of a sudden, this mighty country, this little bit of country that had been, been killing everybody, they were afraid. Watch what they were afraid of. Ain't nobody attacking them yet. But watch what they were afraid of. Read. And their courage melted away. They lost their courage because of one battle. You lose your courage and leave the church because you lose one battle when God has told you you have the victory. My Lord. You lose your courage because you lose one battle. They lost their, they lost, this the first and only battle that they had lost. And the only reason they lost it because they didn't do it the way God told them to do it. Send everybody, don't worry about nobody being comfortable. Do it as I have told you. I don't care if it's three million, I don't care if it's a hundred thousand, I don't care if it's twelve thousand. Everybody go! Yes. Why do you think I put everybody in line today? Because we're going to overcome this battle of poverty. Amen. Everybody was in line. Everybody was in line. Everybody was in line. So God said, when everybody start doing what I require, then you'll come out of where you don't need to be in a state of poverty for what's given. Amen. And this goes, we're going to get by. I used to do that every Sunday. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I made sure, and we would have members in church. At first, I started doing it. So the members started passing out money to make sure everybody, and we're going to get back to that. Amen. We had more money in the bank. Amen. When everybody in church was in line to give, so there will be not one left behind. Those who have will, will not just say I'm giving on behalf of those who don't know. You're going to actually give because you're going to give to those who ain't got. Showing God that the word is true. Amen. Everybody has to go. Read. Joshua and the elders of Israel tore their clothing in dismay. Uh, uh, I'm tired of being disgusted because I'm not. I'm, 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 I'm making sure that you are comfortable. I'm tired of being disgusted. I'm tired of being frustrated because I'm making sure that you are comfortable. Oh, don't worry about tithing. You got your light bill. You got your light bill, dude, and you're behind on it anyway. So this little bit of money that you're going to tithe with, won't you trust God to make sure you ain't behind no more? Amen. Read, Pastor. Threw dust on their heads and bowed face down mm. in the ground. Before mm. the ark of the Lord. Mm, 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 mm. I did. I made this decision when I got. Have I been there? Have I been there? I made this decision about you because I, I, I wanted you to stay at the church. Mm. Knowing what God told me to do. I made this decision without God. Have I been there? Lord, have mercy. I made this decision without God because I love you so much. I made this decision without God. Wow, have I been there? No longer. No longer, no longer, no longer, no longer, no longer, because it ain't me you're supposed to fall in love with. As long as you fall in love with me, there's gonna be somebody you don't love, don't, don't love. Because I can't teach you the fullness of love. Amen. I can show you what the fullness of love looks like, but I can't teach you that because I am not the lover of love. So somebody. Read Pastor. Then Joshua cried out, O sovereign Lord. O sovereign Lord. Me. Why did you O sovereign Lord, Lord of everything? Yes. Lord of all things. Yes. Lord of whatever I need. Come on. Why did you bring us across the Jordan River if you are going to let the Amorites kill us? This ain't the first battle, y'all. This ain't the first. We don't want some battles. All of a sudden, we lose one, and all of a sudden, we dead. How soon? How soon? When God don't put uh, put food on the table? How soon we forgot how much food He already done put on the table in the past? How soon we forget? Come on. He put the table, he put, he put, he made the table void of food to see if, 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 was you in love with the food or was you trusting in him? Read, Pastor. If only we had been content mm. to stay on the other side. Mm -hmm. Lord, what can I say now that Israel has fled from its enemies? Overthinking, thinking my way right out of his will. Assuming why he did what he did. And it was not him doing what he did. It was what I did not do because I was concerned about your comfort. It was not what they, what, what God did. It was what you did not do. He said, anytime you go into battle, everybody goes, now all of a sudden you're making decisions beyond what I told you to do. Because you're worried about making sure the people are comfortable instead of being obedient to the will of God. Read, Pastor. For when the Canaanites all, and all the other people living in the land 
hear about it. They will surround us and wipe our name off the face of the earth. Now here it is. They are. Uh, we talked about that word today. They are. Uh, they are. Uh, they are afraid of nothing. Why are you afraid when God has made you a promise? Why you? Re I told you you are still religious if you're more concerned about sin and love. Spiritual people talk about love. Uh, 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 religious people talk about the sins of others. See, because when I'm when I'm when I'm spiritual, you know what? I ain't got no sins to talk about. I'm only making. I'm only. <laughs> when you watch a trailer of a movie, it's not the movie. It's an appearance of what the movie is going to be about. I am not the movie. I'm only appearing here so you can see what God says is true. This is just an appearance that I'm making in a place that you don't understand. This is just an appearance that you're making in a place that you don't understand. Because when I believe in Jesus, I know sin has no power, but it has purpose. That is deep. Amen. Yes. When I believe in Jesus, I stop talking about sin, and I start showing love, and I show love first to God, but I question him of how he wants to use me or where he wants to send me. Read to me, Pastor. And then what will happen to the honor of your great name? Huh? They just, can you believe they check God? Did you believe they just check God? You let this happen, God. What's going to happen to your honor? He said, you already dishonored it with your disobedient spirit. Yeah. My Lord. You mad right now because there's no honor coming to you in, in victory and no honor came to you in victory because you dishonored me. And dishonor begets dishonor. Honor begets honor. Yes. Read, Pastor. But the Lord said to Joshua, Talk. Get up. Get up. Why are you lying on your face like this? Why are you lying on your face like this? Israel has sinned and broken my commandment, my covenant. Mm -hmm. They have stolen some of the things that I have commanded must be set apart from Ooh, me. Wait, 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 wait. Did they break a law? No, they didn't break a law. They broke what God told them to do right then. Giving us a glimpse of what life we're going to be with when we come out of, the, out of the Old Testament, when we come out of the law. There's something beyond the law. And there's God's word right now. This was not a law. This was a glimpse of what was going to happen after the law had no more power. When I was God, I do what God tells me to do, and whatever God says supersedes the law that he gave yesterday. Read, Pastor. And they have not only stolen them, but have lied about it and hidden the things among their own belongings. Ooh, talk. That is why the Israelites are running from their enemies Ooh. in the defeat. So. One of y'all did is why the church can't grow. Something one of y'all said is keeping this church from growing. Mm. Get up, Bishop. Check up right now. Get up. I'm going to shake it now. Yeah, you ain't dealing with Bishop no more. This is this was this was God who told who told Joshua to get up. Get up, Bishop! My God. I can see him. I can see him. He said it's a nation. It's a family. And then there's somebody in the family mm. that's causing the problem. Oh my son. When they get quiet up in here, up in here, uh, I can hear them saying as the, as the disciples, he said, I, you know who it is. He said, I, you know who it is. He said, God going to kill you. Read, read, Pastor. For now, Israel itself has been set apart for destruction. Oh, if you don't do what I tell you, Bishop, the spirit of Jesus is going to be destroyed. Because I told somebody what to do right now in this day, and you you allowed them not to do it. My God, my God. And you did nothing about it. 
It's your wife or the church. It's your children or the church. It's your friends or the church. And the church, it, the church is what I need more than I need my wife. The church is what I need more than I need my friends. The church is what I need more than I need my children. Because the church is where I learn what God needs me to do. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I ain't no good to my wife. I ain't no good to my children. I ain't no good to nobody if I'm not positioning myself to learn what God needs me to do. Come on, come on. I must be about my father's business. I must learn what he needs me to do. And all these people want to teach. Amen. But they can't, they can't keep serving God with God allowed Dorian to come in their lives. Great excuse. Pastor, why you ain't preaching today? There's a storm going on. There's a storm attacking Florida. No storm here. Amen. Amen. But it would be very convenient for me not to drive 200 miles today. Amen. Hmm? Bishop, feel like I'm getting a cold. <laughs> ain't no storm. Ain't no cold there yet. <laughs> but it's very convenient for you not to come to church. Amen. Amen. Bishop, I got a cold. I think I got pneumonia. If you talking to me and you ain't in the hospital, that means God say, I didn't put you in a place not to go. Oh, don't you say not to go to church. So go to church and do something about your cold. Amen. Oh my God, Bishop. Why are you coming off like this? This one ain't got nothing to do with it. It's all God. Amen. Talk to me, Pastor. I will not remain with you any longer. Oh! He told me he better stage right and leave me. <laughs> Y'all duck is in trouble. <laughs> Cause I ain't, I ain't to let God leave me because of you. <laughs> Y'all better hear what I'm saying. I'm in the valley of trouble because I, not because of what you did and not because of what you took, because I didn't check you because of who you are to me. Come on, Ooh, I'm in the valley of trouble. Not because he they they were he they were about to be destroyed. Joshua ain't did nothing. But he didn't take care of who he should have took care of. And why would Joshua do Is that 15? Read Pastor. I will not remain with you any longer unless mm. you destroy the things among you that were set apart for destruction. Great. Get up. Command the people to purify themselves in preparation mm. for tomorrow. Mm. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, said. Mm. Hidden among you, O Israel, are things set apart for the Lord. Mm. You will never defeat your enemies until you remove these things from among you. Mm. Mm. Come on, getting hot in here. In the on. morning, you must present yourselves by tribes. Uh huh. And the Lord will point out the tribe to which the guilty man belongs. Uh mm huh. -hmm. That tribe must come for it and with its clan. You must present yourself by issues. And God will point out the issue that did what it did. But I ain't got to worry about that because all y'all, I tell you what, God said either you point out your issue. I'm going to say you the one that did it. I bet you're telling you've been smoking then. Oh. I bet you're telling you've been lying then. God said, you point out your issues, I'm going to kill you. I bet you, I bet you, I bet you, God, I got this problem. I ain't got no problem taking your stuff. I, I've, been, I've been getting high, God. God, I've been smoking cigarettes. God, I've been cheating on my... I bet you when God said, either you tell your issues or not, I bet you come clean in. He will point out the guilty clan. Read. The clan will, the clan will then come forward. Uh huh. And the Lord will point out the guilty family. Oh my God! First, it's a clan, it's a neighborhood. Then there's a there's a there's a family in the neighborhood. Now watch this now. Finally. Finally, each member of the guilty family must come forward oh one by one. Oh my God! Now I can hear. It. I can hear. It. 
Jaden took it. I know Jaden took it. And here I am lying because I don't want nothing to happen to Jaden. And here come first lady lying because she don't want nothing to happen to me. And here come Mr. Michael lying because he don't want nothing to happen to first lady. And then here come, here come, here come pastor talking about, well, God, you made me the pastor of my husband. She lying because she don't want nothing to happen to pastor, uh, uh, a minister. Amen. Family lying for family. Amen. But God said, I, I, once I got the family, I ain't worried about it. Watch what you do. Talk to me. The one who has stolen what was set apart for destruction will himself be burned with fire, along with everything he has, for he has broken the cup covenant of the Lord and has done a horrible thing in Israel. You have broken a love relationship with God. You are blessed by the, by the grace of Jesus. When you sat in this chair this, at this church, you didn't make a love relationship with the spirit of Jesus. You made a love relationship with God. And I hate you hearing this sermon today. Because he said, when you don't walk through them doors, and I ain't put you in the hospital on the job, you have broken a love relationship. Not with the church. Not with Bishop. But the one who put you in the church. Yes. God. Yes. Yes. Read that last verse again. The one who has stolen what was set apart for destruction will himself be burned with fire. I was headed for destruction and I made a promise with God by joining the church. Yes. My God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I was already set aside for destruction. God said, I'm going to give you a way out through the spirit of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, God. He said, love saved you, but you didn't honor the love by reading. Along with everything he has, for he has broken the covenant uh, of the Lord. You didn't honor the covenant. Because I was ready to destroy you. In other words, I was ready to let you go through hell on earth. But I spared you because... I thought we made a covenant when you said I do to the spirit of Jesus. Uh -huh. Amen. Uh -huh. Yes. Thank you. I did my part. I begin to I begin to clean up nations in you. Yes. Because you because you because you were afraid of what you shouldn't be afraid of, and you got to understand every issue you got in your life is something that you're afraid of, and God is letting you know that I'm going to let you deal with this issue, so I want you to know that it can do nothing to you and it has no power over you, but I have not delivered it unto you. I have I have not delivered you unto it, but I have delivered it unto you. So what are you afraid of? What has, why are you afraid of something that has been delivered to be subject to you? Why are you afraid of something? He said, so I'm going to let this thing do all that it can to show you it has no Power. Thank you. Read, Pastor. Thank you. Now, now just read, finish that covenant part. Now, here's our scripture reading. Early the next morning, Joshua brought the tribes of Israel before the Lord, and the tribe of Judah was singled out. Then the clans of Judah came forward, and the clan of Zerah was singled out. Then the families of Zerah was came forward, and the family of Zimri was singled out. Every member of Zimri's family was brought forward person by person. Achan was singled out. Then Joshua said to Achan, my son, even though he had did wrong, he still recognized him as his what? He didn't call him like we, he, that, 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 that demon me. No, he still called him his son. My son, give glory to God. Let them know that you believe God is living, is what he's saying. The God of Israel, by telling the truth, if you lie, that means you don't believe God is real. Make your confession and tell me what you've done. Don't hide from me. There's, there's trouble in the valley. Achan replied, it is true, I have sinned against the Lord. I made a covenant with God when I joined the Spirit of Jesus. I have sinned against the Lord, the God of Israel. Among the plunder, I saw a beautiful robe from Babylon, 200 silver coins, 
A bar of gold weighing more than a pound. I wanted them so much I had my way. I had my way over your will. How long you think God gonna let you keep having your way over his will? How long do you think God gonna let you keep having your way over his will? I had my way over his will is what this is saying. Y'all hear this? Yes, sir. And I ain't whooping nobody. I ain't even in the building. Bishop has left the building. <laughs> they are hidden in the ground beneath my tent with silk buried deeper than the rest. In other words, you're going to die anyway, so you might as well die with honor. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> Glory. In other words, you you at least at least know that you know uh, when I do get to where I'm supposed to end up, you know what? I did tell the truth the last place I was where I didn't belong anyway. Y'all with me? Yes, sir. So Joshua, and so here it is, it says, it says, so Joshua sent men to make the make a search. They ran to the tent, found the stolen goods there. Just as Aiken said. The silver buried beneath the rest. They took the things from the tent and brought them to Joshua and all the Israelites. Then they laid them on the ground in the presence of the Lord. The truth is going to get you killed. The truth is going to get you killed. I'm telling you right now. So when I tell most people that, then what they do? I don't want to die, so I'm alive. The truth don't get you killed. And you know it. That's why you're lying. Oh, don't tell me you ain't practice on that. How many times you lie because you know mama's going to get that stitch cord? How many times you lie because you know mama's going to get that belt? How many times you lie because you know the truth going to get you a whooping? But it ain't no whooping you finna get. The truth about to get you killed. Lord. This is what y'all scared of. Notice what it says. The truth gonna get you killed. So then Joshua and all the Israelites, where was it? 23. They took the things from the tent and brought them to Joshua and all the Israelites. Then they laid them on the ground in the presence of the Lord. Then Joshua and all the Israelites took Achan. Remember now, all of us defended one another. I defended her, she defended me. All our family members defended one another. God know our spirit. He know our natural love will supersede what we don't know. And so when he said that if the spirit is in Achan, guess what y'all, if the spirit is in Achan, it's in the rest of the family because Achan is the head of the family. Y'all hear me? Yes, sir. If the spirit is in Achan, it's in the rest of the family because Achan is the head of the family. Watch what happens. Then Joshua and the Israelite took Achan, the silver, the robe, the bar gold, his sons, his daughter, cattle, donkeys, sheep, goats, tent, and everything he had brought to the valley of Achar. Then Joshua and Achan, then Joshua said, said to Achan, why have you brought trouble on us? Uh-oh. I got it. Uh-oh. Why you brought trouble to this church? There's trouble in the valley. Bishop ain't in the building. I ain't aiming at you, but if I hit you, I didn't mean to miss you. I promise you. Come on, Bishop. Amen. Come on, There's trouble in the valley. And if I'm not part of the solution, I'm part of the trouble that was created in the valley. Yes, sir. And can I tell y'all something? Yes, sir. Huh? From bishop to pastor to minister to minister to minister to, to, to elect to missionary to deacon, all of us have caused trouble in the valley. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All of us. Yes, sir. Ain't none of us dog on it, innocent. Yes, sir. All of us. Yes, sir. This tells Holy Ghost. 
Slowly go, slowly go. Look, 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 Joe, come here. Because God 
and I, and I, I taught this, and I want you to hear this very plain. Your thinking is not the way God thinks. I had to teach the man, the man of God, this morning. Come here, come here, come here, my son. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you. I ain't gonna let you preach because I know I give you a Thompson chance to preach. That's why I ain't called you the other day because I wanted to get the people out of church. That's why I call everybody but you because I. I know, I know. I already knew the Thompson was gonna come at you, so I ain't, don't, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna give you liberty to preach. <laughs> but this morning, in the place, who is God more upset with? The liar or the homosexual? The liar. liar. Why? Because a liar can't tear it inside. But uh, uh, but a homosexual is a what? A, a what? Obama. Abomination before the Lord. First of all, he didn't say you make people an abomination. He said they are an abomination before me. You can't do nothing about what I made. Leave it to hell alone. You can't do nothing about what I made. I got. It, I got. It. Please, I gotta get room for one more sign. I leave with you a new commandment. I leave with you a new commandment. Huh? Huh? And the new commandment was, was you make sure nobody is a homosexual. I leave with you a new commandment. You make sure nobody is a fornicator. I leave with you a new commandment. No, he did not say that. He said, I don't care about what people are doing. So God said, I don't care why the hell you so worried about it. He said, my son came and died for their sins. You sitting up here condemning folk and saying you're the only one going to heaven because you're doing right. God said, all your right and your right hate ain't going to take you nowhere but to hell. You got to hear me right now. Your right hate ain't going to take you nowhere but hell. You can write all you want, but if you got hate with your right, it ain't doing you no good. No good. Right hate in my God. Your right hate. Right hate. Thank you. I gotta stop using the word because I can't I can't check it because I say it up in here. I can't you can't check your child. So y'all right here checking your child because they cussing. She only said what she heard her spiritual teacher say. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. That's that other church. We don't do that. <laughs> you right here. Check your memo. Check your memo. <laughs> that what y'all y'all teach the damn over there. Y'all that's that other church. Check your memo. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. 
I love everybody as long as they ain't sinning with fornication. I love everybody as long as they ain't drunk. I love everybody as long as they ain't no crackhead. Let me tell you something. God took me and took me to the city of crackhead and he made me the head of crack to fill the cracks in your life. Jesus. Oh, oh, God. God. You hear me? Right. He took me to the city of crackhead and made me the head of cracks to fill the cracks in your life. Life, because I ain't scared of you talking about my cracks. Come on, somebody. Oh my God. Y'all hear me? Holy Ghost. Hello? Wow. Pastor said, I got to write that one. It take a crack. Only, only a crackhead can preach that, baby. <laughs> Holy Ghost. You can sit down, man. Do y'all understand what's wow. going on here? Wow. Huh? You got cracks in your life. And how do I know? Because you're talking about those that appear to be less than and they're appearing now and still going to church. That means what? That God is using them in the place of where they are appearing. Thank you. You're right. You're right on that. Jesus. But y'all so caught up. Uh. Y'all so caught up in what people are doing and the only reason you're so caught up in what people are doing because the more you look at them, the more you can hide from yourself. Oh, all right. You're so caught up. To call the church because you know what God said hey, I'm gonna get Bishop in the place where he ain't gonna allow what ain't uh, supposed to be allowed and you can come in here doing whatever you're doing baby you come up here with your lipstick on baby you come up here in your short dress baby you come up here drop that scarf if you want to but I'm gonna tell you God gonna teach you how to love with short dresses on God gonna teach you how to love while you drunk God gonna teach you how to love wherever you are He said what well, y'all want y'all wanna bring people out of where they are God said I need some warriors in the place of ladies wearing short dresses. I need some warriors in the place of people being drunk. I need some warriors. Yeah. Jesus. Hallelujah. All right. All right. There's trouble in the valley. Because y'all keep getting in the way, you judges on this earth. Amen. I'm messing with me making soldiers where I need them. Confess. What you got a problem with in somebody else's life. Amen. And free yourself. Y'all know what I'm gonna tell you something. Y'all missing a y'all missing a crusade that God is using through an abomination. Some of the most loving people you can ever find is homosexual. You know they need to, they need them clean. My God. They so neat they make me sick. But you notice something? They're not as angry as they used to be. Amen. Once God allowed them to display their love by marrying each other. Y'all listen to this. God is a God of right now. Yes. You can get caught up in what was written yesterday and miss what God is doing right now. God says, guess what? What are you hiding? Because those homosexuals that are married are free because they're no longer Hi. Amen. We all some homosexuality ain't nothing but a sin. But my point is, when you can, until you can admit your sin, God can never use you in that sinful place for Himself. Because you too busy hiding and trying to look. Try, I'm sorry, not holy, but trying to look religious. And if I look religious, that mean I'm holy. But if I become spiritual and I love right where God put me. Oh, my God. I grew up in this neighborhood. There was not a day, Brother Terry, that I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't wake up knowing that I had to fight. And guess what it taught me, though, Brother Terry? Oh, I took some whooping, but I got my share in. Oh, but when I went to Atlanta, huh? Well, nothing up there I couldn't whoop because they prepared me here. You better let God prepare you right where you at for where he want to take you. You better hear the word of God. Yeah. Hello, somebody. I never lost a fight in Atlanta because I was prepared in Fort Lauderdale. Yes. Oh, I, 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 I walked the dust. Because you know why? I walked through there with confidence. I walked through that and learned from the whoopings that I took. Tell somebody. And when I took, see, you ain't, you ain't, you ain't, I'm gonna tell you why you don't know how to fight. You ain't been beat yet. 
That's why y'all can't fight for God. That's why y'all keep lying, going in and out for God. Because God ain't let the devil beat you yet. Because when you've been beat right, you'll never lose another fight. I promise you that. When you've been beat right, I got to be right up in this neighborhood. So when I went to Orlando, I lost not one. Every ne oh, boy, come on. Can you say that? Can you say that word? Ask him. You go to Orlando. Go to Orlando. I'm not, I'm not boasting. I'm telling you I was prepared for where I was going. Yes. You hear what I'm telling you? Yes. I'm not telling nobody that you are. Uh, I was. I, I learned that if I, if I could, if I could lose some battles in Fort Lauderdale and never lose none in Orlando, that means I could lose some in the natural. And if I learn and get whooped right, I never lose none in the spirit. Come on, now. Come on. That's good. Come on. That's good. That's good. It's trouble in the valley. Because you don't want to learn. I, I got people. On, I got. I got some cats on. Oh, 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 I did. I did. I did. I forgot. I did. I did. I did take one. I did take one. Them two dudes jumped over. They jumped over. They put something on me. I remember I went home. I forgot about that one. I remember I went home. One of them went to school with me. I remember I went home. And, 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 I, and, and I, had, I had a little bloodshot going out of my mouth. My mama said, look like you've been in a cowboy fight. <laughs> but, 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 but you know what? Yeah. The young man yeah. who went to school with me, his cousin was a little bit older than me, right? So, 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 he had to ride the bus. So I didn't ride the bus that day. Cause he thought I was scared, that's why he get on the bus. I rode my bus to the school. And then when he got off the bus, I was standing right by the side of the door and clocked him as he came off that bus and I went to work, you hear me? God gave me a strategy, you hear what I'm trying to tell you? He gave me a strategy, you hear me? Huh? I, 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 went, I went and waited until he got a boy look at him. I forgot about that whooping I did to him. Boy, and then you know what? And I knew he was going home to get his cousin. And they jumped on me at the basketball court. Huh? So when the cousin came, I went to the basketball court. Before they got there, it was at a park. So they had a lot of things. And so what I conveniently did, was I placed a bat, a baseball bat close to the court. And when that, when that older cousin came, I saw it coming. I, I, I said, man, don't, don't, uh, you know, he, uh, and, and, and back it up toward that bat. I jumped back that bat and went to work. By any means necessary. See, y'all ain't been mad enough. Y'all ain't been whooped right. When you've been whooped right, you'll win by me no matter what you. Come on, That's right, business. I didn't forget about that one I took, but it took two of them. Come on, guys. I forgot about that. But I said this to say that there's trouble in the valley because you would not accept losses. You would not accept looking bad in order to learn how to win for God. Yes. He was. Achan told the truth. And he, watch this. All those that took up for Achan, all not to take up, we don't know. All those that was in his family. What what that what read, Pastor? Then Joshua and all the Israelites took Achan the, the silver roll, the bar of gold, his sons, daughters, cattle, donkey, sheep, goats, tent, and everything he had, and they brought them up to the valley of Achor. Then Joshua said to Achan, Why have you brought trouble on us? The Lord will now bring trouble on you. All And all the Israelites stoned Achan and his family and burned their bodies. So what happened? What happened? God, in the New Testament, the Old Testament, he allowed them to be stoned. In the New Testament, God says, if you tell the truth, the truth will convict you and the common man will die. That's true. And your spirit will come alive. That's true. If you tell the truth in the New Testament, Something got to die. Yes. So if I lie about it, now guess what? I can't tear it. My, I seal my faith. I seal my faith. He ain't going to tell me later away with you. Remember God gave us a glimpse with Abraham about sacrificing his son? This is your glimpse of what God going to tell you away with you because he already told you if you lie, you can't be with me. 
So either I die without, either I live on this earth dead, meaning I'm walking on this earth without God, or I die from humanity and live in the spirit forevermore. But something got to die. When you have done unto God's people, how do I how do I love God? And how do I know that I love God? I love what God loves. I love what God loves. And then Jesus said, I leave with you a new commitment. Love your brothers and sisters as I have loved you. And in doing so, in other words, I love you in spite of you persecuting me. I love you in spite of you mocking me. I love you in spite of you putting your hands on me. I love you in spite of what you did to me. He said, I, Jesus said, in spite of what y'all did to me, I still love you. So love each other just like that. Amen. And he was telling them, they didn't know what he was saying at the time, but he knew when he died, some of those that he was talking to and telling them, because he had helped some of their family members. He had brought some of their family members back to life. He had healed many of their family members. You could not have healed that many people and not touched everybody. Amen. And they were standing there hollering, crucify him. Crucify him. Crucify him. Crucify him. How many times? God and people at this church have forgiven you. Everybody in here has been forgiven of something. And the first chance you get to beat them up or, or, or chew them up, you holler, crucify her. Crucify her. Crucify him. But yet God says, now I need you to show them that you know me. Yes. Love those that crucify you. Uh -huh. yes. Love those that persecute you. Love those that mock you. Love them as if, love them the same way I loved you when you sinned. And every time you sinned, you got a whip and hit my son across his back. My God. Right Yet I loved you. My God. Now I'm trying to tell you right now there's trouble in the valley. And I'm telling you how to get, bring trouble out of the valley. And how I bring trouble out of the valley, I got to get hate out of the situation. Yes. yes. Something's got to die, saints. Yes. Yes. And I'm telling you right now, I love every one of y'all. I love every one of you. Yes, sir. I don't want nobody to leave this church. But if you bring in anything here other than the Spirit of God, I'd rather you not be here. Amen. Amen. Anybody bringing anything here uh, without without displaying the Spirit of love, I'd rather you not be here. Because you're causing trouble in the battle. Amen. Yes. Somebody might not come back because I said this today. But that shows me, your, you know what? You need some more in the world because God said, let them run to the world and let Amen. Satan do what he do. Amen. Yes. This brother, this brother stood up this morning and confessed that he'd been to prison three times. In and out of jail. He ain't in the shade. Stand up. He don't care. He don't care. He ain't because he because he because he knows he's being used by God. That's right. He said, in and out of how, how many times, talk, tell him how many times you've been to prison, man. Tell him, tell him, tell him. In a prison. I don't need to tell your testimony when you stand right now. How many times have you been in prison? Three times. What, what, hey, what you got that, what you got that C? I got the B. You got the B? Oh, the first time I get the zero. That's right. I know about that because I got the zero. See, y'all see that even God made me a zero in prison. Y'all gonna hear the word of God. You get a zero the first time. And then you get an A, then you get a B. Some guys been there so much they scratch off the letter before before they know. Because the, the letter be on the card and before you know. So I had one dude, a dude I was really missing, he had an H. That nigga wrote crash crap the H on. <laughs> but tell me this. And before you came to Spirit of Jesus, you were in and out of what? I was in and out of prison. That's where I was in and out of the county jail. I went every year. Uh, we got to the point where people used to Come on out here, man. Come on out here. Because I want to I wanna thank you high. You were shame. People used to uh, place bets on me. Um, Lord. And and like when I get in, the uh, uh, officer told me, he said, you know, bro, I don't know what it is you're going through, but you don't belong here. But can't you hear, you see these people betting $50 when you get out that you'll be.